Hello, everybody. I'm Angelique Montano Breslin from the Pelvic Health Hub. And today on the Pelvic Dialogue, I have the pleasure of speaking with my colleague, Stephanie Aniel. And Stephanie has a practice uh, based out of Toronto, Canada. So today we are going to be talking about all things pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did choose this topic. It is a timely uh, topic as May is Pelvic Pain Awareness Month. So let's get to it. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So maybe we can start uh, by having you just tell us a little bit about yourself, what it is that you do, what you're passionate about. Yeah, so, uh, so my name is Stephanie. I'm a clinical social worker um, and I'm an associate therapist at East Toronto Therapy, uh, a private practice in Toronto. Um, I'm also a daughter and a wife. Uh, I'm a sister. I'm a friend. I'm a dog parent to the best dog ever, Molly. Um, and I'm a person who has experienced pelvic pain. Uh, and so when it comes to what I'm passionate about, I'm really passionate about working with people that have pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can you um, maybe tell us a little bit about your journey uh, with pelvic pain and, and what that looked like? Yeah, so um, like anyone's story with pelvic pain, it's complex, definitely. Um, for me, it developed over a long period of time, and the starting point was a series of urinary tract infections, or UTIs, in my late teens, early 20s. Um, the pain was sporadic, um, and it occur occurred a few times a year um, over a long period of time. Um, and so I thought it was UTIs, and doctors seem to as well because it was being treated with prescriptions for antibiotics for years. Mm -hmm. um, then I went through an especially stressful period in life as people do and it became uh, the pain became um, a bit more severe uh, and a bit more frequent too. Mm -hmm. uh, but by then I had a regular healthcare provider um, who helped me investigate what was going on. Uh, I connected with a pelvic physiotherapist, which was a really positive experience. <laughs> um, you know, it was really validating and gave me a lot of good resources and information and just like options to explore um, and things to do. And then I was in graduate school at the time and I had the opportunity to conduct uh, a systemic literature review on chronic pelvic pain. Um, and, and I also conducted qualitative research about the experiences of women with pelvic pain. And so I was really able to kind of dig into the topic and learn, uh, you know, really understand, learn about and understand what I was experiencing, um, the factors that were contributing to it um, and what to target in treatment, which, you know, my story is a really positive one. The pain is more or less resolved. Um, when I do experience pain now, it's kind of tantamount to a headache. You know, I don't get upset about it um, and it really just goes away with time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a, that's a, an amazing story. I mean, if, I think what's similar to that story with some of the clients that I see mm -hmm. is that it it really does typically span over a period of several months to several years before mm -hmm. an actual diagnosis is made. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess you know that's part of what has driven me to initiate this dialogue is because we would like to see people struggling with pain, you know, actually get into appropriate management and interventions in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, that's something that is slowly starting to change and I'm, mm -hmm. we're starting to see that anecdotally, but, um, but I think that's a really big piece when it comes to pelvic pain is that people struggle for so, so, so long. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, um, you know, that's, I, I hear sort of some, some of that in, in your own story. Absolutely. Um, and likewise, like with the, the clients that I've worked with, it's very similar, you know, yeah. people just struggling with this for years and years and years um, yeah. and not kind of getting appropriate help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what would you say with regards to your struggles, you know, trying mm -hmm. to find proper solutions, trying to find the, the appropriate interventions when it came to your pelvic pain? Mm -hmm. um, how was that for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I'd say the biggest struggle was lack of appropriate education and support from healthcare providers, um, which sounds blaming, but it's not, you know, a big contributing factor early on was that I was in my twenties. And so I was in university and I, it's like, mm -hmm. it's a transitional period of life. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was moving around a lot. And so I was 
primarily accessing healthcare from like walk-in clinics on university campus or just walk-in clinics in different cities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the problem was that I thought I was having unexplained UTIs and I didn't know why, which was stressful. And I wasn't seeing a doctor regularly who could kind of be like, wait a minute, like something about this isn't making sense and we should yeah. look into it further. Um, yeah. You know, we really rely on GPs to kind of say, hey, this is what this could be. Um, and I didn't get that, but I don't really blame, you know, it's not the fault of one person. It was just kind of the situation at the time. Right. right. But I definitely would have benefited from a regular healthcare provider or a doctor saying, hey, I think we should investigate this further. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's flip it on the other end of yeah. your perspective as a practitioner mm -hmm. that has a somewhat more focused practice in chronic pain, pelvic pain. Um, what advice would you give to those struggling with pain at this For time? Sure. And I'd say this answer comes from a person that's had pain and a person that is a practitioner now as well. Right. Um, the first, it takes, um, and no one likes to hear this, but um, it takes time <laughs> to learn about and manage a health condition. It does. It just yep. does. It takes time. Um, so make it a priority. Ask yourself what you can take off your plate while you're trying to figure out you know, the sources of the pain and, and how to manage the pain, like give yourself, that's, that will, that's such a gift to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the second is to learn about the pain. Um, listen to podcasts, read books, go on websites, go on the hub, you know, like mm -hmm. look up research, mm -hmm. um, take, um, take, you know, your care into your own hands, really. Right. Um, finding a multidisciplinary team of supportive healthcare providers is really, really important. I think too, um, you know, if you don't feel supported for your, by your GP, or if you don't have one, get one for sure. Um, consider pelvic physiotherapy, consider psychotherapy. Um, and then finally work collaborative, collaboratively with your healthcare team to try and figure out, you know, what are the factors that are contributing to my pain? Um, so you can figure out, you know, what is the best way forward in terms of treatment and what I can do to help myself and what I can get help for. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, that's really, really important. There's a lot of mm -hmm. different moving parts there. Um, I, I don't think that it is really common knowledge. I mean, it, it may be for us, but mm -hmm. the general population may not really understand the link between physical pain, um, yeah. your physical health and your mental health. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to persistent pelvic pain, it's such a huge, huge piece. Mm -hmm. And you'd mentioned, you know, um, having a multidisciplinary team or a, a group of people that understand this field um, and that can collaboratively work to help you with your outcomes, I think is huge because that's really what the research is showing too mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to pelvic pain it and is. managing it is, is really the importance of like a multimodal or a multidisciplinary approach. Um, so on that note, can you chat a little bit more about the importance of managing mental health? Yeah, uh, when people are struggling with pelvic pain, for sure, for sure. So, um, so first, I think that when we're looking at pelvic pain, we want to reflect on all the factors that might be contributing mm -hmm. to it. Um, and this is really unique to each person. Um, so, so it takes a more holistic approach, um, meaning that I ask clients about various contributing factors. So I'm going to go through some of the factors and ask some example questions. This is not like a full list <laughs> of yeah. all the factors, but it's just definitely things, a starting point for people to kind of consider um, some, of the, some of the questions they can ask themselves. So um, first, what are the biological factors? Um, do you have a history of infections or injury in your pelvis? Um, in the structures of your pelvis, just in your pelvis. Um, so is, like a UTI or a UTI? Yeah. Exactly. Like UTIs, right. yeast infections, mm -hmm. injuries. Right. Um, uh, is there ongoing muscle tension? And that's something that can be evaluated with a pelvic physiotherapist, of course, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the mental health piece comes in when we're looking at the sociological and psychological factors. So in terms of the sociological factors, some questions, um, some starting questions a person might want to ask themselves are, you know, what experiences have I had that may be contributing to the pain um, in my pelvis? What are my ongoing stressors? How stressed do I feel in the day to day? What kind of support do I receive from my healthcare providers, from my partner, from my friends, from my family on this topic? Mm -hmm. um, you know, relationships are really, really big when it comes to managing, uh, just, just managing any health condition again. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of the psychological factors, asking yourself, you know, what thoughts come up for me when the pain occurs? 
when the pain flares up, what's going through my head? Um, what are my beliefs about the pain and my capacity to sort these out? How do I feel in relationship to the pain? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so yeah, when it comes to the pain and mental health, it's important to know that pain may cause stress and stress can cause and exacerbate pain. Um, these two experiences can reinforce each other and cause a pain cycle that can be difficult to get out of. And it's so important, I think, just to emphasize how human this is. Like mm-hmm. who I, I kind of, I compared the pain earlier in my own experience to a headache and like, right. who hasn't had a tension headache? Do you know any, like, I don't know anyone that hasn't had a tension headache. <laughs> <laughs> if they are, I want to find them. <laughs> uh, that's the, I definitely have tension headaches. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like literally from stress. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So, so, you know, pelvic pain is mm-hmm. like, the, like stress and, and pain are just so um, intertwined. Absolutely. Um, and so, so yeah, the pain cycle, um, the pain cycle can be triggered when a person experiences pain. So, um, the pain occurs, you know, the pain flares up and they might feel fearful, um, and have thoughts about not recovering, you know, it never ending. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens if the pain gets worse? What am I going to do? Um, it, what the pain might mean in terms of fulfilling their roles as parents or partners or workers, you know, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, but the pain cycle can also be triggered by stress. Right. Yeah. So, um, which might manifest in body as tight muscles and upset stomach, a headache, or, you know, pain in the yeah. pelvis. Yeah. Um, either way, once that kind of pain cycle begins, the pain and stress send overlapping messages to our central nervous system. Um, and as the messages kind of overlap, our nervous system enters a state of reactivity. Mm-hmm. It's, it's readying itself for danger by entering fight or flight mode. It does mm-hmm. this by putting time and energy into worrying about the pain, um, maybe guarding the muscles in that region or avoiding certain activities. Mm-hmm. And if our body and mind and nervous system stay in this kind of heightened um, state of arousal for long periods of time, this can lead to more emotional stress and pain perception over time. Mm-hmm. So this is a long way of saying that. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I believe it's really important for a person who experiences pelvic pain or really any health condition, um, to try to understand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, To try to understand the contributing factors so that they can make a plan moving forward, um, with their supportive healthcare provider or health team to target Mm -hmm. the areas that they can do anything about. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and often it's those sociological and psychological factors for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really important. And that's a, as you know, in the physio world, at least we, yeah. I think also in, in this the social worker and mm-hmm. sort of psychology world, mm-hmm. we address that as the biopsychosocial model, Yeah, it's like one massive, you know, sort of complex sounding word, mm-hmm. I guess in some ways it is, but, uh, but it does really describe what we should expect to target and have a look at as triggers to pain. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the one thing, especially in Western culture, I mean, Western culture is typically very focused on the biological piece, the physical mm-hmm. piece, and that's mm-hmm. sort of our mentality as, as people um, in Western society. Uh, whereas I think, you know, the psychology and the social aspects sure, we, we can understand how that will play a role, especially after mm-hmm. you've described it so nicely for, for us. Um, but it's not really acknowledged as well in, in Western culture. And I think, you know, that's definitely changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but again, it's something that is, I think, just as important, and if not, in some cases, even more important than the biological factors. Uh, and it can be more of what is driving the pain, as yeah. opposed to the biological, physical factors. Because yeah. there are times, like I have some complex uh, pelvic pain clients that mm-hmm. come to see me and I'll assess their, their muscles, their soft tissue, uh, and may not really find all that much. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, sure, there, there are some tension issues at play, but mm-hmm. other times the driver is more about managing the stress, the anxiety, um, the emotions that, that go around um, living with pain. So, come along with it absolutely yeah, and it, so I just, it can't be kind of underestimated right no, um no, but it also you know I, I hate to kind of pathologize it too because mm-hmm. because it is just so like you can't separate your mind from your body yeah. from your nervous system <laughs> like it's yeah. all integrated right yeah. um yeah, yeah and that's sure. what being human is mm-hmm. so can you maybe yeah, we've talked a little bit about what causes and what mm-hmm. triggers 
Jane. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about interventions or modalities that you find helpful in your practice? Yeah, for sure. So, so kind of before anything, psychoeducation is really integral to learning about and managing the pain. And I know that pelvic physiotherapists do tons of psychoeducation mm -hmm. in their practice. It's what I experienced. It's what I hear my clients, you know, when they talk about their experiences with pelvic physios. Um, and really it's just, again, like understanding what's going on in the first place is huge mm -hmm. before you can kind of do anything about it. Right. Um, so once a person has kind of determined um, that let's say the way they're thinking about their pain or beliefs that they have about their pain or their capacities is causing stress, anxiety. Um, you know, once, once a person has kind of said, yeah, I think this is like a contributing factor, right. Mm -hmm. Um, then typically, um, a combination of mindfulness and cognitive behavioral therapy, um, has been shown to be really helpful in managing that aspect of the con condition, um, and ultimately the pain. So it's not just about, you know, managing the stress, managing the anxiety is managing the pain, right? So right. it's important Absolutely. to kind of understand that. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, and just in terms of what CBT is, it, it really takes a closer look at, you know, what are the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, um, that we have in relation to the pain and then explores the changes that we can make to those pieces to improve our experience and our relationship to the pain. Right. Um, and so that's kind of really, but you know, sometimes even before CBT, it's really mindfulness, like noticing right. and naming what's going on, what, what's going on for you internally right. when you're, when you're experiencing pain. And that can be, that can be a challenge, right? Like mm -hmm. that, that part yeah. is, is again, psychoeducation is important, but knowing what, like being able to name, this is what's going on yeah. internally is important before you yeah. can kind of really move into CBT work. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's helpful because I know CBT comes up a lot when it comes mm -hmm. to pelvic pain, um, but getting an understanding that sometimes that's not the be all and end all. Again, it seems to be like a, a unique to each individual as to mm -hmm. what, what sort of plan will work for, for that person. Right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's move on to, um, to what you would love to see in the pelvic health and the woman's health world. Um, you know, what would you like to, to see happen or change? Is there anything in particular that, that you have thoughts on? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, I, I think it's really important for all healthcare providers. So I'm not just talking about doctors, right. I'm talking yeah. about doctors and nurses and um, mm -hmm. pelvic physiotherapists and physiotherapists and chiros um, and, and, yeah. chiros and yeah. like and therapists of all stripes so psychotherapists social workers you yes. know, psychologists yes. what have you yeah. um, to really get a better understanding of how chronic pain works um, mm -hmm. and how patients can be meaningfully helped um, that's yeah like I mean I'll kind of leave it at that but I just I yeah. think the awareness and, um, and information on the part of healthcare providers is important um, so that that can be provided to mm -hmm. patients when they present in pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think it's so, so important. And I think we're starting to see that more and more mm -hmm. um, being offered as even continuing education courses for health practitioners mm -hmm. out there, get, just getting a better understanding of how persistent pain and chronic pain works, because it's not the same as acute pain, that's for sure. No, no. Totally, and totally different beast, right? Yeah. And, and I think the other thing I think, and we talked about this earlier before, earlier, but um, mm -hmm like having your healthcare team talk to one another, connect with yes. one another to kind of really, so that we all have a mm -hmm. full picture of like, what is going on with this client? What is going on with this patient? Right. Um, so that we can kind of all be on the same page and like, right. this is this is the plan that we're all moving forward with kind of thing. Right, I yeah. agree, I agree. Yeah, it can be very confusing with, for clients. You know, they hear one thing from one individual and is a complete yeah. opposite of to, from another one, uh, person, so. Absolutely, yeah, and I'm more than happy to kind of connect with yeah. my clients, um, you know, doctor mm -hmm. and pelvic physio, just to kind of, again, it just helps me help, mm -hmm. help them. Yeah, <laughs> really. yeah absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? I think so. I think we over. covered a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we covered quite a bit. Um, yeah. So then I have one last question. I asked this mm -hmm. of all of my guests. Um, so for for you, mm -hmm. what is it that you like to do for your self care? Yeah. So this is actually something that started since the pandemic. Okay. Um, 
I've been working from home full time instead of taking the subway to work. And so in the mornings, I've been taking my dog Molly to the dog park, um, which means I'm spending time outside, you know, around trees in a park with my dog, you know, watching her play and just being in nature. And I love it. And I value that change so much. And I think it's like, it's really made an awesome positive impact in my life. It made me kind of think about yeah. once life goes back to normal, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. what, what do I want my life to look like? So it's, right. it's just, I can't even say enough, like how much, like going for a 45 minute walk in the morning and being in a park has, Oh gosh. Yeah. It's like such a great way to start the day. So Absolutely. I recommend it. That's even if fair. you don't have a dog, get out for a walk. <laughs> yes. Best. And it's getting nicer. Well, yes. maybe not this week. It's going to be raining quite a bit. <laughs> but this even week. in the winter, <laughs> I'd like bundle yes. up. Yeah, I have yeah, my yeah. hat, my scarf, my everything. Yeah. And I like, yeah. and I love it. Like it's, it's like minus 15 out and I'm like happy yeah. to be outside yeah. not on a subway. So amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. <Get> outside. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Mm. I think this was really, really helpful. And thank you so much for sharing your experiences and, and the clarity that you bring to such a complex sort of um, field in, mm -hmm. of pelvic pain. Um, so, so yeah, happy, happy pelvic pain awareness month. Yes. Happy pelvic pain awareness and, month. <laughs> and um, we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye, Steph. Bye.